boys. Come yeah. on up. about the superstar. She's on Sherry Carr's team. She's the second line director of mine. Um, Ellington is the CEO of five residential facilities with 200 residents. She leads a team of 75 employees. I would say she has a very legitimate full-time career. In addition to that, she is spectacular as a Pampered Chef director. She's an upper level director with um, this year 89,000 in sales, mm. achieved excellence award in that category, qualified 26 recruits. Mm. She is absolutely amazing. And on top of that, she has very active sons who are athletes and uh, she's at football games, she's doing all kinds of things. And if anybody has the definition of being busy, this woman would <laughs> mirror the definition or whatever. She is busy. So without further ado, I'm so excited to have you here to share with us. So feel free to use your mic. Thank you, Marie. Uh, first, let me say I'm so excited about being here. And ever since Marie and Nancy and everyone began to put on the pre-conference workshops, that has always been one of my favorite parts about being coming to Nationals because it offers so much great information uh, to all of us. So hats off to you guys, and I hope that you guys continue that. So as Marie said, for those that don't know me, my name is Ellington Boyce. I am from Oklahoma. I'm a wife. Uh, I'm a wife of 16 years. I'm a mother of two fabulous boys. My oldest, Mark, is a junior in college. He plays basketball. My youngest, Calvin, is a sophomore in high school who plays multiple sports. So I'm a very involved and supportive mother. Um, I was asked today to share kind of how I do what I do. So for those that don't know, as Marie indicated, I run two successful businesses, and I have done that my eight years of doing Pamper Chef. So my first business, as she said, is a mental health facilities where I work as a CEO 40 plus hours a week, uh, employing about 75 people. Um, in addition to that, of course, there's my Pamper Chef business, which I've done for eight years, and my goal is to rock out 10 live cooking shows per month, if not more, okay? So I get the busy part of it, as she indicated. Um, let me start by saying this. You know, lots of people ask me, is it easy? I won't just tell you no, I'll tell you hell no, it is not, okay? <laughs> so let me clear that up right now. But I'm gonna follow that up with saying something that my parents told me all of my life and growing up, that nothing in life that comes easy is worth having, okay? So remember that. So when you're having those days where you're feeling like you can't go on and poor me and pity this and pity that, you have to remember at the end of the day, your hard work will pay off, okay? It's not designed to be easy. No business is easy. No job is easy. So you have to remember, if you have goals and aspirations with this company, it's not going to be. Um, so just remember that. But as I said, at the end of the day, if it comes easy, it is not worth having. So that is my first piece of advice to everyone. Secondly, I'm sure everyone in this room at some point shares conversations with their uplines or with each other or their spouses about how busy you are. You know, it's not enough hours in a day. Um, I can't seem to get it all done. I don't know how I'm going to manage. Um, we all go through that, and I totally get that. But I think sometimes you have to have a really, what I call, a come to Jesus talk with yourself. And I have these with myself all the time, okay? When my kids get in trouble, I say, come here, it's time to have that come to Jesus talk. So you have to just sometimes make your mind up that you're going to have that talk. And that talk is a talk that you're very honest with yourself. Not what your director wants to hear, not what your team needs to hear. It's what truly you as an individual or as a consultant, director, whatever your case may be, what you're wanting to get out of this business. Now, if you're sitting in a seat and you're happy with where you are, hats off to you. But if you're sitting out in the audience today and you know in your heart that you haven't reached the level that you want to be, whether that's in sales, whether that's in recruiting, whether that's in excellence, whether that's a trip level, 
then you probably need to have that talk with yourself. Don't continue to use the excuse of being too busy because every year you will continue to fall short of the goals that you would like to reach. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you this, my response to the whole busyness, and my team will tell you, I don't hold their hand, I don't buy into the whole wine and busyness because they can't shoot that to me. I'm sorry and they all tell you that, okay? <laughs> so I'll just tell you this, no matter what your situation is in life, for everything that is truly important to you, and I do mean truly, you will find a way to figure it out. It's, it's just really that simple. Doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter where you live, how rich you are, how poor you are, how old, how young, if something in your life is truly, truly important to you, you will find a way to make that happen. So that is my second piece of advice, okay? The third thing that I learned in order for me to be able to juggle two successful businesses, I needed to work smarter, not harder. So I had to find ways to do that to make this manageable for me. So a few things that I've done and implemented in my business that has allowed me to be successful for eight years, I'll share just a few of those things with you. The first is I learned that I had to work to be extremely organized. Organization is a huge key to running a successful business. Is everybody born that way? No, some people are. But as Love indicated a little bit earlier, we can all work to be better at the things that we're not great at, okay? We're not all born to be great recruiters or great sellers, but there are ways that we can work hard to become and do those things really good, and it's the same with being organized. I also learned that I needed to develop systems to help me stay on task. I'm almost 45, so I don't remember things the way that I used to. It's hard to keep things on track like I used to. So I learned early that I needed to have systems. Did I develop all the systems that I used? No. I stole many of those things from different consultants sitting out in the audience who were willing to share those. So whether you create the system or whether you take something that someone else is doing, find something that works with, for you and do that. So organization and systems help me to manage and to be able to maintain and do what I do. The second thing that I learned is I needed to, to book my shows at my shows. When I began my business, I was spending a tremendous amount of time on the phone making calls to get shows on my calendar. We've all been there. We've all done that. And that's what I needed to do at that time. But as I continued to grow as a consultant, I knew that I really needed to book my shows at my shows. Why? Because I have two active boys and I work on another full-time job. So it was very difficult for me to have to spend that extra time. It even worked better because people are more excited at the show. They enjoy it themselves. They've had a great time. Um, so it's easier to actually get them on my calendar. So I've learned to get those bookings at the actual show. I partner with my host to leave every show with three bookings. Now, does that happen at every show? Absolutely not. But that is my goal and I work extremely hard at it, even to the point of giving a bonus gift for every host that I walk away with three bookings from their show. Okay? It's worth it to me not to have to spend the extra time on the phone. And I honestly can tell you about 98% of the time I walk away with those three bookings. what I'm most passionate about is recruiting. Um, I learned that I wanted to assign my people at the show that recruit before I ever walked out of the door, okay? Why? Because I don't want to spend time meeting you the next day. I don't want to be on the phone for an uh, interview call. That's right. Do I do it? Yes, I do, but that's not ideally my preference. So if you have an interest and I feel like we have a connection, I'm going to work extremely hard to do everything that I can possibly do to get that agreement completed before I leave that show tonight. And I can honestly tell you, and I recruit a decent amount of people, and I can honestly tell you that I probably sign 95% of the people at my actual shows. Okay? If I don't, of course I set it up the next day or 48 hours, but in theory that is my actual goal. So those are just a few things that have helped me. Um, to be able to manage my business, to be able to maintain, to be able to have successful businesses. Now, do I have all the answers? Absolutely not. I'm just sharing a few things that have worked for me, a few beliefs, a few mottos that I've carried in my head um, that have helped me to maintain. So hopefully, 
Maybe this reaches someone in the audience that maybe you've been feeling sorry for yourself or you know, having the whole I don't have enough time thing. I think you just have to dig deep and you have to have those conversations with yourself. And I'll leave you with you know, kind of what I said earlier. Um, just remember, when it comes to your Pamper Chef business, if your business is truly, truly important to you, you will find a way, no matter what anyone tells you, there's no doubt in my mind, you will find a way to make that happen. So that's what I'm